Timothy, a renowned lawyer, enjoyed a life of luxury and prestige. His office, located in one of the most imposing buildings in the city, was frequented by high-profile clients. But Timothy's success was not solely due to his career. Years ago, he had received a substantial inheritance from his family, a legacy that included a considerable fortune and also a beautiful mansion. This house is a piece of our family's history, Timothy would proudly say, remembering his father's words as he handed over the keys to the property. Here, every wall and every object has a story to tell. The inheritance was a milestone in his life, providing him with a solid financial base and allowing him to invest in his career without financial worries. With his talent and dedication, Timothy quickly stood out in the legal field, winning highly complex cases and amassing more wealth. He often used his skills to help those who were disadvantaged, a trait that made him beloved by many. For me, money is a tool, he would often say to his close friends. It gives me the freedom to fight for justice, to help those in need, and of course, to enjoy the good things in life without worries. In addition to his professional success, Timothy was known for his generosity. He made regular donations to various charities, believing that his good fortune should be shared. My family's legacy is not just about material wealth, he would explain. It's about the impact we can have on the lives of others. Timothy's life seemed perfect to those who saw it from the outside, but deep inside, he felt the lack of something deeper, a genuine connection that not all the wealth in the world could provide. At a high society charity event, Timothy met Melanie. The night was lit by dazzling chandeliers, and the soft music created an enchanting atmosphere. Melanie, with her elegant red dress and captivating smile, stood out among the guests. Her eyes sparkled with a mix of curiosity and ambition when she first met Timothy. You must be Timothy, the famous lawyer, she said, extending her hand delicately. I've heard so much about you. Timothy, charmed by her presence and charm, was immediately attracted. Melanie seemed to be everything he was looking for. Intelligent, elegant, and with an aura of mystery. They talked for hours that night, laughing and exchanging stories. Timothy was impressed with her acumen and knowledge, although he did not know that Melanie had already done a detailed research on him before the event. It's rare to find someone so cultured and involved in noble causes, Melanie complimented, praising Timothy's contributions to charity. You really are an inspiration. Melanie, for her part, saw in Timothy a unique opportunity. Her interest was not in the man himself, but in what he represented, financial security and social status. Seeing Timothy, she knew he was the key to achieving her deepest desires. I can't believe the luck I've had in meeting you, she whispered oscillating between a shy look and a captivating smile. It's as if fate had brought us together. Timothy, although normally cautious, was quickly won over by Melanie. He believed he had found someone who finally understood his ambitions and values. Over time, their meetings became more frequent, always filled with sophisticated dinners, deep conversations, and moments of tenderness. Melanie, however, had her own plans. She often reflected on how to position herself to ensure access to Timothy's resources, planning each step with precision. She knew she needed to gain his complete trust and was willing to do whatever was necessary for that. As Timothy sank deeper into his enchantment, Melanie was preparing to execute her strategy, keeping her true motivation hidden. Their relationship, seemingly perfect, began to solidify, with Timothy increasingly convinced that he had found the love of his life unaware of the web of manipulation Melanie was weaving around him. Mark, a longtime friend of Timothy, had always been a confidant and loyal advisor. When Timothy began to get involved with Melanie, Mark noticed something disturbing about the way she behaved. One afternoon while having coffee at the country club they frequented, Mark decided to express his concerns. Timothy, I need to be honest with you, Mark began, choosing his words carefully. Melanie seems to be a charming woman, but something about her doesn't seem right. I have a bad feeling. Timothy, with a calm smile, shook his head. Mark, you've always been overprotective. Melanie is amazing. We have a real connection. Maybe you just need to know her better. That's not it, Timothy, Mark insisted, frowning. She seems to know exactly what to say and how to act, as if she's playing a role. I just don't want you to get hurt. Timothy laughed, trying to relieve the tension. 
You're being paranoid, Mark. Melanie is different from anyone I've ever met. She understands my values, my ambitions. I trust her. Despite Mark's efforts to convince Timothy to be more cautious, the lawyer was blindly in love. Melanie's presence was a fresh breeze in his life, and he did not want to believe that anything could be wrong. As time passed, Melanie and Timothy became inseparable, their meetings turning into romantic dinners and luxurious trips. Mark watched from afar, worried. He noticed how Melanie was increasingly inserting herself into Timothy's life, seeming interested in details about his businesses and investments. Even so, Timothy ignored the signs, convinced he had found his soulmate. Finally, after months of dating, Timothy made a decision. During a special dinner at their favorite restaurant, he knelt down and proposed to Melanie. Melanie's tears seemed sincere when she said yes, but Mark, watching the scene from afar, couldn't shake the premonition that something was very wrong. The wedding was a grand event, with friends and family present. Timothy was radiant, believing he was starting a new chapter in his life alongside a woman he thought was his perfect companion. Mark, on the other hand, could not shake the feeling that this was just the beginning of an even more complicated and dangerous plot. After the wedding, Timothy and Melanie settled into a majestic mansion situated in a quiet suburban area. The house, with its wide windows and lush gardens, seemed like something out of a fairy tale. Timothy continued to dedicate himself to his law career, while Melanie, now officially part of high society, busied herself organizing events and receptions that reinforced the image of a perfect couple. Dear, you did a wonderful job with the decorations for tonight's party, Timothy complimented, watching Melanie oversee the preparations. Everyone is talking about how gracious a host you are. Melanie smiled, her eyes shimmering with a mix of pride and something darker. I just want everything to be perfect for us, she replied, giving Timothy a light kiss on the cheek. It's the least I can do to support you and your career. Behind her charming smile, however, Melanie harbored a hidden desire. The life of luxury and comfort she now enjoyed was merely a prelude to her real goal, to acquire Timothy's inheritance and assets. She knew that with patience and strategy, she could secure her financial future without depending on Timothy forever. Melanie had an ally in her plans, a man named Robert. Robert was a childhood friend of Melanie, and the two had maintained an intimate relationship for years, even after her marriage to Timothy. Robert, a charismatic and ambitious man, shared the same desire for wealth and was willing to help Melanie in her plan to conquer Timothy's fortune. Robert, everything is going according to plan, Melanie confided during a secret meeting away from home. Timothy trusts me completely. He would never suspect that I could have other intentions. Robert leaned forward, his eyes fixed on hers. You're doing an excellent job, Melanie, but we need to be careful. What's the next step? Melanie replied, I'll start gaining more control over Timothy's investments and properties. Once I have full access, we can start moving more aggressively. Robert nodded, a satisfied smile forming on his lips. And what about us? When can we be together without hiding? Melanie took his hand, a intense look in her eyes. Soon, my dear, once everything is under our control, we will be free to live as we wish. While Timothy continued with his life, believing he had found happiness with Melanie, she and Robert plotted in the background, waiting for the right moment to reveal their true intentions and take everything Timothy owned. The facade of perfection they maintained was about to be shaken by secrets and betrayals that would eventually come to light. On a sunny afternoon, Mark decided to make a surprise visit to Timothy. He always believed in the importance of keeping close contact with friends, especially with Timothy, who seemed increasingly wrapped up in his marital life. As Mark drove through the tree-lined streets leading to the mansion, something caught his attention. At the corner restaurant, he spotted Melanie and Robert sitting at an outdoor table, laughing and talking intimately. Mark stopped the car, observing the scene with a growing sense of discomfort. Melanie was visibly animated, touching Robert's arm affectionately, something Mark had never seen in her interactions with Timothy. The closeness of the two, the exchanged glances, and the complicit smiles revealed a relationship that went beyond mere friendship. Determined to protect his friend, Mark headed to Timothy's house. Arriving there, Mark got straight to the point, concerned and tense. Timothy, I need to talk to you, 
It's urgent, he said, entering the living room where Timothy was sitting. Sure, Mark. What's wrong? Timothy responded with a warm smile that soon faded upon seeing his friend's serious expression. Mark took a deep breath, preparing for what he knew would be a difficult conversation. Timothy, I saw Melanie with a man today. They were together at a cafe. They seemed intimate. Timothy furrowed his brow, his expression shifting from surprise to disbelief. What? That must be some misunderstanding, Mark. It must just be some friend of Melanie's. They were probably just talking. I'd like to believe that too, but something tells me there was something more going on there, Mark said, genuinely concerned. Timothy, still disbelieving and trying to alleviate Mark's concerns, said, Melanie would never do something like that, he murmured, almost to himself. She loves me. I trust her. I know it's hard to believe, Mark continued, his voice full of concern. But you need to consider the possibility that Melanie isn't who you think she is. She might be deceiving you, Timothy. Please open your eyes. Timothy, still struggling to process everything, responded, I don't know what to think, he admitted, his voice wavering. Melanie has always been so dedicated, so caring. I can't imagine her doing something like this. I understand how you feel, Mark said. But as your friend, it's my duty to warn you. I just want you to be safe and not get hurt. Timothy fell silent, staring at the floor as his mind wrestled with the evidence and the shock of the revelation. Mark remained by his side, offering support as Timothy processed the painful possibility that the woman he loved might be betraying his trust. The seeds of doubt were planted, and Timothy knew he could not ignore what he had seen. He needed to discover the truth, no matter how painful it might be. After Mark's visit, Timothy was deeply disturbed. For days, he withdrew from daily activities, immersed in conflicting thoughts. The idea that Melanie could be unfaithful haunted his mind. He remembered Mark's words and the concerned tone in his voice. Yet, a part of Timothy still wanted to believe that there was some innocent explanation for everything. However, the doubt grew, eroding his confidence and peace of mind. What if Mark is right? Timothy murmured to himself, his heart heavy. I need to know the truth. Determined to find out what was really happening, Timothy decided to hire a private detective. He looked for reliable references and finally found an experienced investigator named Jack Carlson. In a discreet meeting, Timothy handed Jack all the information he had on Melanie, including the places she frequented. I need answers, Jack. I need to know if Melanie is being honest with me, Timothy said, his voice laden with emotion. Leave it to me, Timothy. Jack responded with a firm nod. I'll find the truth, whatever it may be. The following days were marked by an agonizing wait. Timothy could barely sleep or focus on work, tormented by what the detective might discover. Every ring of the phone startled him, fearing the arrival of bad news. Finally, Jack scheduled a meeting to present the results of his investigation. Timothy arrived at the detective's office with a heavy heart, feeling like the ground could disappear under his feet at any moment. Jack greeted him with a serious expression, indicating that the news was not good. I've found conclusive evidence, Jack began as Timothy stared at him tense. Melanie has been meeting frequently with a man named Robert, and the meetings go beyond simple friendship. Jack placed a folder on the table and opened it, revealing a series of photos that showed Melanie and Robert in intimate moments embracing, laughing together at a restaurant, and even kissing in a secluded place. Each image was like a knife to Timothy's heart. It can't be. She betrayed me, Timothy murmured, disbelief mixed with growing anger. His face turned red, and his fists clenched as he looked at the photos. She's been deceiving me all this time. The intensity of the revelation was too much for Timothy. Feeling betrayed and humiliated, he began to breathe with difficulty, his chest tight with emotion. How could she do this to me? Were his last words before his body succumbed to shock. Timothy fainted, falling heavily to the floor. Jack immediately called for emergency services, and Timothy was rushed to the hospital, still unconscious. At the hospital, doctors diagnosed him with a nervous breakdown exacerbated by extreme emotional stress. Timothy was in a state of physical and mental collapse, his mind unable to process the magnitude of the betrayal. 
He remained unconscious with doctors and nurses working to stabilize his condition. The man who had blindly trusted in love and loyalty was now broken, his life turned upside down by a devastating truth. Upon receiving the news, Melanie felt a mix of anxiety and anticipation. She rushed to the hospital where Mark was already waiting, restless and distressed, waiting for news about Timothy. The tense silence in the waiting room was only interrupted by the hurried footsteps of Melanie, who arrived with a carefully rehearsed expression of concern. As soon as the doctor appeared, his grave expression left no room for doubt. Mrs. Melanie, Mr. Mark, he began with a calm but serious voice. Timothy has suffered a stroke. The situation is critical and, unfortunately, the damage is extensive. He will likely be paralyzed for the rest of his life. Melanie brought a hand to her chest, a dramatic gesture that hid her inner joy. My God, that's terrible, she murmured, her eyes shining with false sadness. Mark beside her just shook his head, absorbing the gravity of the situation. The doctor continued, trying to offer some consolation. We've done everything we could here at the hospital. Unfortunately, there are no further treatments that can improve Timothy's condition. We will discharge him so that he can spend his last days with family, at home, where he will be more comfortable. Melanie pursed her lips, feigning deep sadness while looking at Mark. I will take care of him, doctor, she said, her voice soft yet firm. I'll make sure he receives all the comfort he can. The doctor nodded, relieved to see someone willing to care for Timothy in his final moments. That's the best we can do now, he agreed. If you need anything, we are here to help. Melanie struggled to maintain composure as the doctor walked away, her mind buzzing with the prospect of an imminent victory. Poor Timothy, she whispers, squeezing her eyes shut to contain tears that would not come. He was always so strong. It's hard to imagine him in this situation now. Mark, watching the scene, felt increasing discomfort. He had never fully trusted Melanie, and this situation only heightened his suspicions. Melanie, he began with a grave tone, perhaps it would be better if I took care of Timothy. We could hire a specialized nurse, someone who can be with him all the time and ensure he receives the best possible care. Melanie turned to him, her eyes narrowing slightly. I am Timothy's wife, Mark, she responded her voice soft but with a sharp undertone. It's my responsibility to be by his side. Besides, Timothy has no one else but me. His parents are gone and he has no siblings. He needs someone close, family to care for him now. Mark hesitated, feeling powerless against her logical response, though something didn't feel right. I understand, he murmured reluctantly. But if you need anything, anything at all, let me know. I want to help. Melanie gave a tight smile, a gesture that could almost be seen as warm. Of course, Mark, she said. I know you care for him. We both want what's best for Timothy. As Mark walked away, his mind still filled with doubts, Melanie turned to face the window, letting her mask slip for a moment. A malicious smile spread across her face. She could already envision the empty house, free from Timothy's presence, where she could live without limitations, with all the money and luxury she had always desired. In the days following Timothy's return home, the atmosphere in the mansion became grim and oppressive. Timothy, confined to a wheelchair and unable to care for himself, spent his days in silence, his mind a whirlwind of dark thoughts. Melanie, however, seemed to flourish in the new situation, taking complete control of the house with a cold authority. Feeling secure in her position, Melanie began to bring Robert to the mansion, with no concern for hiding their relationship. Confident that Timothy was completely incapacitated gave her a sense of impunity. Robert became a constant presence, entering and leaving the house as if he owned it. On a sunny afternoon, while Timothy was sitting in the lounge, looking out at the garden through the large windows, Melanie entered with Robert, laughing at a joke only the two of them understood. They walked past Timothy without even acknowledging his presence, their indifference palpable. Robert, you should see the garden in the spring, Melanie commented with a smile, completely ignoring Timothy's dark gaze. That's when it's most beautiful, exactly as I've always imagined. Robert, relaxed and at ease, looked at Timothy with a look of superiority. It's true, the house is wonderful, and now it's ours, Melanie, he said, not bothering to disguise his intentions. 
Timothy, though confined to his state, still had his pride. He watched Melanie and Robert with eyes full of pain and indignation, feeling betrayed and humiliated. How could you do this to me, Melanie? Melanie, noticing Timothy's gaze, approached him with a smile that didn't reach her eyes. Timothy, dear, you need to rest. I'm going to show Robert the rest of the house. He's always wanted to see what life is like here. The pain in Timothy's eyes was evident, but he couldn't protest. Melanie knew this and took full advantage of her position of power. She and Robert left the room, leaving Timothy alone with only his thoughts and the growing sense of despair. As the days passed, Robert's presence in the house became an established routine. Melanie made no effort to hide their relationship, and Timothy, powerless, was forced to witness the blatant disrespect for his dignity and what remained of his marriage. Melanie, secure in the knowledge that Timothy could do nothing, began planning the next steps of her scheme, increasingly confident that nothing could stop her from achieving her goals. One evening, while Melanie and Robert relaxed in the spacious living room of the mansion, their conversation turned to Timothy. Robert, always pragmatic, looked at Melanie with a thoughtful expression. Melanie, how much longer are we going to keep Timothy here? He's just getting in the way of our plans, said Robert, his voice full of impatience. After all, he won't last much longer, will he? We need to think of a final solution. Melanie, who was flipping through an interior design magazine, looked up, considering Robert's words. As long as Timothy was in the house, there was always the risk of something going wrong. And Timothy's constant presence, even in his debilitated condition, was an uncomfortable reminder of their actions. You're right, she agreed, her voice cold and calculating. We need to get him out of here. But we can't just get rid of him. That would be too suspicious. Robert smiled, a gleam in his eyes. What if we sent him somewhere remote? A place where no one would care what happens to him. That way he could die peacefully and no one would question anything. Melanie thought for a moment, then a slow smile spread across her face. My hometown, she said, as if she had just found the perfect solution. It's a small place in the countryside. No one there knows Timothy, and I know some people who could take care of him. Until the end. Robert nodded, pleased with the idea. That's perfect. We can say it's for him to be in a quiet environment, away from the city. When he passes, you simply claim the inheritance and that's it. Melanie closed the magazine and stared intently at Robert. Exactly. He'll just be a memory and we'll finally have what we want. Let's start making the arrangements. I want this resolved as soon as possible. Robert stepped closer to her, placing a hand on her shoulder. We're so close, Melanie. We can't fail now. Melanie turned to him, her eyes shining with determination. We won't fail, Robert. Nothing will stop us. In the days that followed, Melanie and Robert executed their plan with precision. On the morning Timothy was transferred, the sky was cloudy, reflecting the somber mood of the occasion. Melanie, with a false smile and sweet words, explained to Timothy that moving to the small town in the countryside would be better for his health. She mentioned the clean air and peaceful environment as reasons for the decision. Dear, this place will be perfect for you to rest and recover, Melanie said softly, caressing Timothy's arm as he looked at her with a mix of resignation and sadness. I've taken care of everything. Jessica, an old family friend, will look after you. Timothy knew something was wrong but his physical condition and Melanie's emotional manipulation left him powerless to contest. The journey to the small town was long and silent. Robert drove while Melanie sat next to Timothy, maintaining a facade of concern. When they finally arrived at Jessica's modest home, Melanie helped Timothy out of the car, her smile never reaching her eyes. The house, small and simple, was a stark contrast to the mansion where Timothy had previously lived. Jessica, a woman of simple appearance and gentle eyes, was waiting at the door. She had been Melanie's neighbor in childhood, and although their lives had taken different paths, the two had maintained sporadic contact over the years. Jessica, who had taken a nursing course, struggled to find job opportunities in the small town. When Melanie offered her a good payment to take care of Timothy, Jessica saw it as a chance to improve her financial situation. Melanie, Robert, it's good to see you. Jessica said, trying to maintain cordiality. And this must be Mr. Timothy. 
Don't worry, I'll take good care of you. Melanie smiled, pleased with how things were unfolding. Jessica, I fully trust you to look after him. Timothy needs a peaceful environment and attentive care, and I know you're the right person for that. Timothy was settled into a simple but comfortable room, while Melanie and Robert helped to organize his things. Before leaving, Melanie cast one last look at Timothy, her eyes filled with false tenderness. We'll stay in touch, dear. Anything you need, Jessica will let us know. Robert waved to Jessica with a confident smile. Thank you for everything, Jessica. We're counting on you. With those words, Melanie and Robert left the house, ready to continue with their plans without Timothy's interference. Jessica, now responsible for Timothy's care, felt a mix of compassion and curiosity. She didn't know all the details, but sensed there was more to the story than Melanie had told. As Timothy adjusted to his new reality, Jessica prepared to care for him, unaware of the crucial role she would play in the unfolding events. Over the weeks, Melanie maintained regular contact with Jessica, always under the pretext of worrying about Timothy's well-being. She called frequently, her voice always filled with superficial concern. Jessica, how is Timothy today? Is he showing any improvement? Asked Melanie, her words carefully chosen to appear genuine. Jessica, always kind, responded with details about Timothy's routine, his small progressions, and moments of difficulty. He has good days and bad days, Melanie, but we're doing everything possible to keep him comfortable and well cared for, she replied, always trying to reassure Melanie. Despite the reassuring words, Melanie was not interested in Timothy's recovery. She and Robert were growing increasingly impatient. In secret meetings, they discussed the situation and Timothy's apparent resilience. This is taking too long, Robert commented during a discreet meeting, his expression frustrated. He should be deteriorating, not stabilizing. We need to accelerate the process. Melanie nodded, her face reflecting the same frustration. I know, maybe he's stronger than we thought, but we can't let this drag on any longer. We need to ensure that he, that he doesn't recover. That's when Melanie had a dark idea. I'll go there, she decided with calculated coldness. I'll bring some medications that can ease his passing. Nothing too suspicious, something that can be explained as a natural reaction to his health condition. Robert looked at her, admiring her resolve. Are you sure you can do this without raising suspicions? Melanie smiled, a smile devoid of joy. Of course, Jessica trusts me and Timothy doesn't have the strength to question. I'll mix small doses in his daily medications. No one will suspect anything and soon all this will be over. Melanie, always meticulous, carefully planned her visit to Timothy. Before leaving, she called Jessica, her voice tinged with well-rehearsed concern. Jessica, how are things with Timothy? I was thinking of visiting him. I miss him so much and wanted to see how he is personally. Jessica, always helpful, responded with her usual kindness. He is stable, Melanie. I'm sure he would be very happy to see you. It will be good for him to have some company. With the plan in motion, Melanie hit the road, eager to continue her scheme. Upon arriving at Jessica's house, she prepared to continue her act as a worried wife. With a forced smile, Melanie entered the room where Timothy was supposedly lying, fragile and ill. However, to her surprise, she found a completely different scene. Timothy, standing by the window, slowly turned to face her. He was dressed simply, but his posture was upright and firm, something Melanie did not expect to see. His eyes, previously filled with resignation, were now clear and focused on her, with an expression of determination. Melanie, Timothy said, his voice surprisingly strong. You came to see me? Melanie was paralyzed for a moment, unable to hide the shock and disbelief on her face. T Timothy? How is this possible? You are standing? Her mind raced, trying to understand what was happening. Timothy took a few steps toward her, his gaze never leaving hers. Yes, I am. It seems that the change of environment really helped in my recovery, he responded, his voice laden with irony. Or perhaps it was something else that gave me the strength to fight. Melanie, still trying to process the sight of Timothy walking and talking normally, felt a wave of shock and confusion. Her plan was crumbling before her eyes, and she desperately needed an explanation. With an expression that tried to appear relieved and surprised, she turned to Jessica, who was standing at the door, watching the scene with a serious expression. 
Jessica, why didn't you tell me Timothy was improving? Melanie asked, her voice laden with a mix of disbelief and apparent concern. I would have come sooner if I had known. Jessica, maintaining a neutral expression, looked straight at Timothy before answering. It was at his request, Melanie, she replied calmly. Timothy wanted to keep his recovery a secret, for reasons he can explain himself. Timothy stepped forward, his posture now firm and authoritative. Exactly, Melanie, he said, staring at her with an intense look. I asked Jessica not to tell anyone, especially you. I wanted to be sure of a few things before revealing the truth. Melanie, stunned by the turn of events, tried to mask her surprise and embarrassment. With a forced smile, she approached Timothy, extending her hands as if to embrace him. Timothy, this is wonderful. I'm so relieved you're well. I only wanted the best for you, which is why I chose this quiet place in the countryside. Timothy, maintaining a serious expression, stepped back slightly, avoiding Melanie's touch. His eyes, cold and determined, never left hers. Melanie, let's stop the games, he said firmly. I know exactly why you brought me here, and it wasn't for my well-being. But now it doesn't matter anymore. I'm ending all this. Melanie was momentarily speechless, the smile disappearing from her face. Timothy, what do you mean? I've always been by your side, taking care of you. Timothy interrupted her, his voice cutting. I no longer want to continue with this farce of a marriage. You and I know there's nothing left between us but lies and manipulation. I'm filing for divorce, and you'll receive the papers soon. Melanie's face turned red with indignation. Divorce? You think you can just end everything like this? You won't get rid of me that easily, Timothy. We'll settle this in court, and I'll make sure you pay dearly for trying to discard me like this. Timothy remained calm, watching Melanie with a look of disappointment. I'm prepared for whatever comes, Melanie. What I am not willing to do is continue living a lie. Now please, leave. Melanie, furious and humiliated, turned abruptly and left the house, her footsteps echoing through the quiet room. As the door closed behind her, silence took over the environment. Jessica, who had watched the entire scene in silence, finally approached Timothy, visibly concerned. I didn't know things were so bad between you two, she said, her voice full of apprehension. What are you going to do now? Timothy sighed, but then a calm smile appeared on his face. Don't worry, Jessica, all of this is part of the plan. In the past, when Timothy discovered Melanie's betrayal, he underwent an intense crisis. But it was not exactly what everyone thought. The crisis he experienced was an anxiety crisis, triggered by the shock and pain of realizing how much he had been deceived. During those moments of vulnerability, Timothy was rushed to the hospital, where he was kept under observation. After calming down and regaining clarity, Timothy began to devise a plan to reveal Melanie's true nature. He knew he needed time and a careful strategy. During a private conversation with the doctor in charge of his case, Timothy revealed his plan. He offered a significant amount of money to the doctor to tell Melanie that Timothy had suffered a severe stroke and that his condition was critical, to the point of being near death. I need you to do this for me, doctor, Timothy said seriously, his eyes fixed on the doctor's. It's the only way to find out Melanie's true intentions. Please, help me expose the truth. The doctor, initially hesitant, eventually agreed, understanding the gravity of the situation and Timothy's need. With the plan in motion, the doctor informed Melanie about the false diagnosis, detailing the supposed severity of Timothy's condition and giving her a false sense of control and imminent freedom. Simultaneously, Timothy shared his plan with Mark, his longtime friend. Mark, who had already suspected Melanie's intentions, agreed to participate in the act. He offered to take care of Timothy, knowing he could not truly assume this responsibility, but he did so to appear concerned and to make Melanie believe he was on her side. This would give Timothy the necessary time to fully recover and gather sufficient evidence against Melanie. During this period, Timothy stayed in touch with Mark and the doctor, making sure the facade was maintained. He knew that Melanie, believing he was on the brink of death, would reveal her true colors and eventually make a mistake. Timothy's plan was risky, but he was determined to unmask Melanie and free himself from her toxic influence. After Timothy came under the care of Jessica, 
he found in her an unexpected and valuable ally. From the beginning, Jessica proved to be compassionate and supportive, understanding the complexity of the situation. Their relationship quickly blossomed into a genuine friendship. Timothy entrusted her with his deepest secret, that he was not as debilitated as Melanie believed. Jessica, moved by his sincerity and desperate situation, agreed to keep the secret about his true state of health. While pretending to be gravely ill, Timothy maintained discreet and continuous contact with Jack Garcia, the private investigator he had hired before his move to the small town. Jack, always a meticulous and experienced man, continued to gather evidence of Melanie's betrayals and schemes, carefully working to not raise suspicions. Timothy regularly received detailed reports, including photos, recordings, and records of clandestine meetings between Melanie and Robert. Everything is being documented, Jack assured in their conversations, maintaining a professional tone. We are capturing all her movements, and the amount of evidence we have is more than enough to expose Melanie's intentions in court. Timothy, although grateful for the progress, always expressed a mix of sadness and determination. It's not just about the assets, he told Jessica in moments of reflection. It's about regaining my dignity and stopping her from continuing to manipulate and hurt others. I want the truth to come out. Jessica, in turn, had become a loyal confidant. She provided emotional support and helped Timothy strategize, ensuring that all actions were carefully planned. You deserve justice, Timothy, and I will be by your side to make sure that happens, she promised, her eyes reflecting sincerity and concern. During these days of waiting and preparation, Timothy and Jessica got to know each other better, sharing stories from their lives and dreams for the future. This connection helped Timothy stay steadfast and focused, knowing he was not alone in his struggle. He was gathering as much evidence as possible, preparing for the moment when everything would be revealed. In recent days, Melanie's frustration and humiliation grew to unbearable levels. Feeling cornered and realizing that Timothy was more determined than ever to free himself from her control, she decided to take drastic measures. With a look of calculated coldness, Melanie gathered her lawyers to discuss the next steps. I'm tired of being pushed aside, Melanie declared, her voice filled with venom. If Timothy thinks he can just discard me, he's very mistaken. I'm going to sue him for a division of the assets. I still have a right to a significant portion of what he owns, and I'm not going to walk away empty-handed. The lawyers, aware of Melanie's tenacity, listened intently as she laid out her strategy. Melanie knew that legally, as Timothy's wife, she had a claim to the couple's assets. Even though the marriage was clearly falling apart, she believed she could secure a good portion of Timothy's fortune by using the legal system to her advantage. I want everything prepared as quickly as possible, Melanie continued, looking at the lawyers with a stern expression. We'll claim that the separation is irreconcilable and that as his wife, I am entitled to half of the assets. No matter what Timothy has done, I have rights. Meanwhile, Timothy was determined to confront Melanie and protect his assets. He gathered all available allies and evidence. Timothy counted on the unwavering support of Jessica, who became his confidant and personal assistant, Mark, the loyal friend who had always stood by his side, and Jack, the investigator who had helped him with evidence collection. Together, they crafted a detailed strategy for the impending legal battle. Timothy, Jessica, Jack, and Mark met in Jack's office. Jack presented the evidence he had collected. Photos, audio recordings, bank records, and messages that detailed Melanie's betrayals and manipulations. We have everything we need to show the court who Melanie really is, said Jack, playing a recording on a laptop. Melanie's voice echoed through the room, cold and calculating, discussing how she planned to take over Timothy's fortune. Each word was a direct blow against the loving wife facade she had maintained. Mark, with a serious expression, looked at Timothy. This is more than enough to prove that she was not just after the money. She was willing to go too far, at any cost. Jessica, always a calm and comforting presence, placed her hand on Timothy's shoulder. We'll do this the right way, Timothy. With all this evidence, we can protect your assets and show the court who is truly being harmed. Timothy nodded, feeling a mix of relief and determination. Thank you, Jessica, and thank you all, he said, looking at each of his allies. I don't know what I would have done without your support. 
With the evidence organized and a clear legal strategy, Timothy was ready to confront Melanie. The battle would be tough, but he was confident that the truth would prevail. In the courtroom, the atmosphere was tense as Timothy, accompanied by his lawyers and allies, prepared to present the evidence against Melanie. The room was abuzz with murmurs as people awaited the start of the proceedings. Melanie, sitting with her own lawyers, maintained an expression of calculated coldness, but a slight nervousness was noticeable in her glance. When the judge called the case, Timothy stood up, taking a deep breath before beginning to speak. He knew this was the decisive moment where all the truth would be revealed. Your Honor, I would like to present to the court substantial evidence of the defendant, Melanie's infidelity and malicious intentions, Timothy began, his voice firm and clear. With a nod from the judge, Jack began to present the evidence. First, photos of Melanie with Robert, captured in intimate and compromising moments, were shown. The images, projected on a screen, displayed Melanie and Robert in secret meetings, their expressions and gestures clearly indicating a romantic involvement. Melanie tried to maintain her composure, but the color began to drain from her face as the photos were displayed. Murmurs of shock ran through the courtroom as the extent of her betrayal became evident to everyone. Additionally, we have audio recordings, continued Jack, adjusting the sound equipment. The recordings revealed conversations where Melanie discussed with Robert her plans to seize Timothy's assets. In one of the recordings, Melanie's voice rang out clear and cold. Once he's out of the way, we can split everything and start over. No one will suspect us. The room fell into absolute silence as Melanie's words echoed, leaving everyone present stunned. Timothy's lawyer then presented additional videos and testimonies, including statements from Jessica and Mark, which corroborated the evidence of Melanie's treachery and nefarious plans. Jessica, in her testimony, spoke with sincerity and emotion. I never imagined Melanie could be so cruel. She manipulated Timothy and tried to destroy him, all in the name of greed and power. Mark also testified, sharing his attempts to warn Timothy and his observations of Melanie's suspicious behavior. I knew something was wrong, but I never imagined she was capable of something so despicable. The judge, with a serious expression, listened attentively to each piece of evidence presented. As the sordid details of Melanie's schemes were revealed, the atmosphere in the courtroom grew increasingly heavy, marked by expressions of shock and disbelief among the audience. At the end of the evidence presentation, the judge called for a recess to consider the evidence. As the room temporarily emptied, Timothy, Jessica, Jack, and Mark exchanged supportive glances, aware that they had done everything within their power to seek justice. The truth was finally out, and the decision now rested in the hands of the court. After the recess, the court reconvened with an atmosphere charged with anticipation. Everyone awaited the judge's decision who had carefully reviewed the evidence presented by Timothy and his lawyers. Melanie, still trying to maintain a facade of calm, looked increasingly nervous as the judge prepared his sentence. The judge, a man of severe expression, looked over the documents before him before raising his eyes to the room. After considering all the evidence presented, he began, his voice firm and clear. It is evident that the defendant, Melanie, acted dishonestly and manipulatively intending to financially benefit at the expense of Mr. Timothy. The murmurs among those present grew as the judge continued. The evidence of infidelity and conspiracy to gain financial advantage is compelling. It is clear that the defendant sought to exploit her relationship with Mr. Timothy, aiming to access his assets and resources. This behavior is not only ethically reprehensible, but also constitutes a serious violation of the principles governing asset division in divorce cases. Melanie, visibly pale, looked to her lawyers in despair. They too appeared apprehensive, aware that the situation was far from favorable for their client. The court, therefore, rules in favor of Mr. Timothy, the judge continued, his voice echoing through the courtroom. I grant him the majority of the assets, including the family home and financial assets, recognizing that these were largely acquired through his inheritance and personal effort. Timothy breathed deeply, feeling a wave of relief and justice. Finally, after months of uncertainty and suffering, the truth had prevailed. Jessica, sitting beside him, squeezed his hand with an encouraging smile, while Mark nodded, satisfied with the outcome. The judge paused, 
looking directly at Melanie. As for Mrs. Melanie, the court recognizes her right to a fair share of the assets acquired during the marriage, but this share will be significantly reduced due to the extenuating circumstances presented. Any attempt to appeal this decision will be considered in light of the evidence of misconduct presented. Melanie, visibly dejected, left the courtroom with heavy steps. The defeat was clear in every line of her face as she avoided the gazes of the curious crowd gathered at the exit. Her expression, previously haughty and confident, was now marked by a mix of humiliation and despair. The news of the verdict spread quickly, and Melanie felt the weight of public judgment as severely as that of the court. As Melanie walked away, Timothy and Jessica approached, surrounded by friends and allies who had supported Timothy throughout the entire battle. Timothy, relieved and thankful, turned to Jessica. His face lit up with a smile of relief and gratitude. We did it, Jessica, said Timothy, his voice choked with emotion. The truth has finally prevailed. It's hard to believe that all of this is over. Jessica, with a radiant smile, warmly hugged Timothy. You deserve this victory, Timothy. It was a long journey, but justice has been served. Now you can start anew without Melanie's shadow looming over you. Mark, who was nearby, joined in the celebration, gently patting Timothy on the shoulder. You were brave, my friend. It wasn't easy, but you kept your head high and fought for what was right. I'm proud of you. Timothy nodded, feeling the sincerity in Mark's words. He couldn't have done it without the support of his friends and the determination to expose the truth. With the relief of victory, a sense of freedom began to take hold of him. He looked around, seeing the smiling faces of his allies, and felt deep gratitude. This victory belongs to all of us, Timothy declared, his voice full of gratitude. I couldn't have done it without each of you by my side. Now finally I can move forward and start a new chapter. As Timothy, Jessica, and Mark left the courtroom, the sun seemed to shine more brightly, as if reflecting the new hope burgeoning in Timothy's heart. Melanie, on the other hand, disappeared into the crowd, facing the uncertain future she had crafted for herself. In the days following the court victory, Timothy deeply reflected on Jessica's kindness and unwavering support throughout the entire turmoil. She had played a crucial role in his recovery and quest for justice. Feeling immense gratitude, Timothy decided he wanted to do something significant to repay her generosity. On a sunny afternoon, Timothy invited Jessica to a special lunch at an elegant restaurant in the city. As they enjoyed a delicious meal, Timothy looked at Jessica with a sincere smile. Jessica, I don't know how to thank you for everything you've done for me. Your loyalty and friendship were invaluable, and I want to help you achieve your own dreams. Jessica, surprised and touched, looked at Timothy with curiosity. Timothy, your gratitude is enough. I'm just happy to see you overcoming all of this. Timothy shook his head, determined. No, Jessica, I want to do more. I know you've always wanted to study medicine, but circumstances never allowed it. I want to help you realize that dream. I'll pay for your medical school so you can become the doctor you've always wanted to be. Jessica was momentarily speechless, her eyes brimming with emotion. Timothy, I don't know what to say, that's so generous. I never expected anything like this. It's the least I can do, Timothy replied with a warm smile. You stood by me during the hardest times, helped me fight for justice. Now it's my turn to help you achieve what you desire. Consider this a small token of my gratitude for everything you've done for me. Jessica, with tears in her eyes, squeezed Timothy's hand in gratitude. Thank you, Timothy. I will make it worth it. I promise to dedicate myself to my studies and become the best doctor I can be. In the following months, Jessica began her journey in medical school, where she quickly excelled. Her grades were exemplary, and she became known for her dedication and passion for the health field. Each of her achievements was celebrated by Timothy, who felt proud to have contributed to the success of someone so deserving. For Jessica, this opportunity represented both a new beginning and the fulfillment of a lifelong dream. She dove into her studies with enthusiasm, determined to make a difference in people's lives, just as she had done in Timothy's life. In the times when Jessica was not immersed in her medical studies, she and Timothy maintained constant contact. They often met for lunch or simply to stroll through the city, enjoying each other's company. During these times, 
the friendship that had started during a period of difficulties blossomed, turning into something deeper. On one such sunny afternoon, while walking through a botanical garden, Timothy stopped to admire an exotic flower. It's amazing how something so beautiful can arise from such challenging circumstances, he commented, turning to Jessica with a thoughtful smile. I think that applies to us too. Jessica, with a sparkle in her eyes, nodded. Yes, we've been through a lot together. Who would have thought that all that turmoil would lead us to this moment of peace and joy? Timothy looked at her, feeling a connection that went beyond friendship. Jessica, you've brought light into my life in ways I never imagined. Your strength, kindness, and dedication have inspired me to be a better person. I feel something very special for you. Jessica felt her heart race, her mind swirling with Timothy's confession. Timothy, I feel it too. The time we've spent together has been incredible, and I can't imagine my life without you now. You helped me reach my dreams, and I want to be by your side, supporting you too. With those words, the two looked at each other with a new understanding, recognizing that the bond they had cultivated was more than just friendship. The love that had grown between them was true. Soon after, Timothy and Jessica officially began a relationship. They shared more than happy moments. They also discussed their dreams and plans for the future, always supporting each other in their journeys. For Timothy, being with Jessica was like finding a safe harbor after a storm, a place where he could be himself and find peace. Jessica, in turn, found in Timothy a partner who deeply understood her and encouraged her to follow her dreams. Their love, born out of a time of adversity, blossomed into something beautiful and lasting, proving that sometimes the most difficult moments can lead to life's greatest joys. On Jessica's graduation day, the university campus was filled with excitement and celebration. The ceremony marked the culmination of years of dedication and effort, and Jessica was radiant in her graduation gown. Timothy, sitting among the guests, watched with a proud smile. His pride for Jessica was palpable, and he could not hide his happiness to be by her side on this special occasion. When Jessica's name was called, she walked up to the stage with confident steps, her smile bright as she received her diploma. The auditorium applauded warmly, and Timothy clapped louder than anyone, his heart full of joy for his beloved. After receiving her diploma, Jessica was invited to give the valedictory speech as one of the top students of her class. As she took the microphone, Jessica took a deep breath and looked out at the audience, her eyes finally finding Timothy's. Today is a day of great joy and achievement for all of us, she began, her voice clear and filled with emotion. Everyone here has worked tirelessly to reach this moment, and I am incredibly proud of all my fellow graduates. She paused, smiling as she looked around the hall. But I would like to take this moment to thank a special person, someone who believed in me even when I doubted myself. Timothy, she said, turning directly to him, you were not just a friend and partner but also my biggest supporter. Your unconditional support and love gave me the strength to overcome each challenge. I would not have made it here without you. Thank you for standing by my side. Timothy felt a surge of emotion upon hearing Jessica's words. The audience applauded warmly, and Timothy, visibly moved, smiled and waved at her, proud and thankful. Jessica, with tears of happiness in her eyes, concluded her speech with a message of hope and perseverance for everyone present. May we never give up on our dreams, no matter the obstacles we face. And may we always have people by our side who believe in us. Years have passed since the thrilling day of Jessica's graduation, and life for the two has transformed into a tale of love and success. Jessica, now a respected doctor, had become one of the leading specialists in internal medicine at one of the city's most prestigious hospitals. Her dedication to patients and her profound knowledge distinguished her in the medical community, earning recognition and respect from colleagues and patients alike. Timothy, in turn, also thrived in his legal career. After the public revelation of his story of overcoming and the exposure of Melanie's betrayals, Timothy became a figure admired in society. The brave way he handled adversity and his unwavering integrity won the trust of many. His law firm became sought after by numerous clients who appreciated his competence and commitment to justice. One day, after a long day's work, Timothy and Jessica met at home. As they entered, Timothy gave a long sigh, 
clearly satisfied with the productive day he had. Today was a busy day, he said, taking off his jacket and hanging it up. I closed two important cases and received a thank you letter from an old client. Jessica, who was in the kitchen preparing tea, smiled at him. That's great, Timothy. You deserve all this recognition. People see how much you care for your clients and how you fight for them. Timothy approached, hugging her from behind and kissing her shoulder. And you, Dr. Jessica, how was your day? I'm sure you saved some lives today, he said with a loving smile. Jessica laughed, turning to face him. It was a full day but rewarding. Helping people regain their health is an incomparable feeling, and knowing that I can do this every day is a privilege. They sat together on the couch, enjoying the tea and each other's company. The life they had built together was filled with love and achievements. Jessica was often called to give lectures and participate in medical conferences, while Timothy continued to expand his office, forming a team of lawyers who shared his vision of justice. Thus, Timothy and Jessica moved forward, living a full and fulfilled life. With their thriving careers, Timothy as a renowned and respected lawyer, and Jessica as a prominent doctor, they found a harmonious balance between work and personal life. Each achievement was celebrated together, every challenge faced as a team. On a quiet evening while sitting on the porch of their beautiful home, Timothy held Jessica's hand and looked at the horizon. I never thought we'd get here, he said, his voice full of emotion. After everything we've been through, it's almost surreal to be so happy and at peace. Jessica smiled, her eyes sparkling in the starlight. We built this together, Timothy. Every moment, every choice brought us here, and I'm grateful for every step of our journey. They embraced, feeling the warmth of the true love they shared. For Timothy, the journey of pain and betrayal had turned into a story of redemption and love. Jessica, for her part, found not only professional success, but also a life partner who supported and inspired her daily. Free from obstacles, Timothy and Jessica continued to write their story one page at a time, with love, respect, and a deep understanding of each other. Regardless of what the future held, they would always be together, building a life rich in meaning and full of joy. Life, once marked by challenges, now was a continuous celebration of love and success, where each day brought new reasons to smile and be thankful. With their hearts intertwined and their hands joined, Timothy and Jessica looked to the future with hope and confidence, ready to face any adventure that destiny brought. Want access to more stories like this? Click the link in the pinned comment below and find out how.